React Hook Form is great library and today I want to show you how to handle async data in your forms. So let's get into it. Here is our demo. As you can see, it's a simple form that maps over the entities and you can change the name of a person, we can change the country and we can change whether they are retired or not. This is a simple example just to show you uh, how to do it. So to show you that it's being mm, filled with the data from the API, I'm just going to refresh this page. As you can see here, we don't have data. So there, was a, there wasn't an form. And here is our response from the API. It has employees, it's an array of objects, it has name, country and retired. All right, and now we can go to our code to show you how it's being done. So first of all, I'm using Next.js app router, but it doesn't really matter. I just want to show you that I have this route here that will mm, send me this data. Here's a simple array of this object that I show you just a couple seconds ago. So now we can go to our form. So I'm just going to go quickly through the things that are not really interesting yesterday. So for example, we got this schema. It has name, country, retired. As you can see here, country can be only the USA or the Poland. I just decided to do it like that. And here's our form schema. So I'm using Zot to do validation on my form. Uh, what else? Here is our data fetching. I'm using React Query because it is a great library for fetching data. And also if you want to learn about it, I have a separate video on my channel, so go and watch it. Going further, here is our use form. As you can see here, I'm passing a generic prop. Uh, so I have everything typed uh, correctly. Here I'm passing a Zot resolver to validate my forms based on the schema. And here's the most important things. It is the values. What you are passing here will be updated in your forms. So it can be a little bit confusing because also you can pass something like default values. But the problem with default values is it's gonna update the form state only once. So it works correctly if you've got already your data. But in my case, I'm doing the request to the API on the same time that I'm trying to set the default values. So at the first render, I don't have this data, so it will be passed and undefined. So I don't will have the data in my form. So what we have to use instead of default values, we have to use values. And this is the way to set your forms based on the API response, basically on the async data. Uh, as you can see here, the employees can be undefined because yeah, it's a fetch call and we have to wait for the data. So as a fallback, I'm passing an array. And here is the most important thing. And it's amazing that it works like that. So let's say that you have some refetch. And let's say every five seconds, you would like to update your form. So you can do it. It's great. So every time the employees changes, the value will be updated. So the form also will be updated. It's great. Going further, we've got a use field array. And actually, I'm not going to go further because it is not the thing that interests us too much. Here it is, what is important today, the values property. But let's go here and let me show again that the data is being fetched from the network. And also, uh, let's see the on submit function that the data is passed correctly. So as you can see here, I'm waiting for the data. It comes, the employees, the fetch is being filled out and we can go now to the console. I will clear it. Let's say that John Smith will have a nationality of the USA, send data and we can go here, employees. And let's see, we've got all the data, John Smith, country, USA, retired. I can check it off and check that again, it is false. So as you can see, everything works. So this is how you load async data into your components. I hope it helped you and see you in the next one. Bye.